everyone and welcome back to Emkin Gardening. Today we are going to be highlighting a very special shrub, the At Last Rose. This is Ryan and I's absolutely favorite rose. We have three of them already in the front yard. We love this rose. Not only is it incredibly fragrant, but it is disease resistant, which if you have ever had roses before, that can be a bane of having them with, you know, black spot disease, powdery mildew, aphids, like fully attacking your plant and your roses. You can have a little bit of aphids if you have like an outbreak, but nothing compared to the other roses that we have on our property. Very rarely do we see any aphids on our Atlas roses. So we also really love the color of the Atlas rose. It has a beautiful kind of like peach apricot color, but it also has a coral look to it as well. And you can kind of ombre it into the different fully petaled color palette that it has. It's very much like a tea type rose but the range of colors that it does have is very appealing in the garden. We are going to be highlighting our Atlas Rose right behind us in between our apple and our pear tree. If you remember, we just recently transplanted our blueberry bushes that were back here. We have moved them to our berry bush garden and now there is a giant space that needs to be filled. So, we are going to be putting our at last rose right there. What I think is going to be nice is that it's going to have bright pops of this apricot orange color popping through all of this foliage back here from the trees. This is a full sun location. However, it will get some shrouding of light because of the fruit trees. I think it'll be okay though with this rose. It's pretty tough. It's pretty tough. The Atlas does want a full sun location. So we'll see. I'm pretty sure it will have enough sunlight here. It's not producing berries or needing that to produce berries. So I think it'll be okay soaking up as much sun as it can. Some facts with our Atlas rose. It gets three by three, so pretty nice size, kind of compact rose bush. It's not gonna get ginormous. It's not going to be very spindly. It's very mounded in its habit, very compact three by three. It is a zone five through nine, so it's pretty good for us. We've never had issues with our other Atlas roses, so we know that the zone five is gonna be perfect for us. We garden in a six, so that zoning is great. And it's going to be blooming from May until the fall, like through the fall. So it reblooms very nicely. You don't need to deadhead it in order for it to rebloom like a lot of other roses. You need that deadheading constantly to push more growth. The Atlas doesn't require that. So you don't need to deadhead it. If you wanted to deadhead it to kind of clean it up a little bit, you can do that. But other than that, we kind of just let the rose hips form at the end of the season and call it a day. We do prune these every year. We did them back in our pruning videos if you wanted to go check those out. But it's super easy to prune a bush style rose. So in addition to the Atlas rose that are going to be back in between our fruit trees, we're going to flank the rose with some perennial salvia. We are going to be planting two Snow Kiss perennial salvias. These ones have very long stalks that come up. They are white with a little bit of a pink lip as the bloom goes out. As you can tell, this is out of bloom right now. And what you do with perennial salvias is you would go in and clip it back, these calyx, clip them back to that nice leaf foliage, and it's going to push more blooms for the second half of the summer. So whilst this is kind of already out of bloom, we will be trimming it so that more blooms can pop up later on. The Snow Kiss Salvia is going to be getting 
almost two feet tall by two feet wide. So it does take up a little bit of space. It is very winter hardy though. This is a zone three, goes down to a zone three. Incredibly winter hardy. All of our perennial salvias are that we have on the property. So we're excited to have a nice kind of bright, again, pop of white spilling through these giant branches back here. This is also a full sun. So we will see how this one will perform closer to the ground than the at last will. Again, I think it will still be okay. This salvia is also fragrant and it attracts pollinators of all varieties. So we will be flanking our Atlas roses with the snow kiss perennial salvia. So the game plan to plant is we're going to use a shovel just because it's a little awkward getting in there with our auger. We're going to dig the holes. We're going to really amend the soil, plant them on up and make sure that they have enough space to kind of get to their full potential. All right, let's start planting. to have our favorite rose right here in the middle of our backyard. We're glad that we are able to share our love for the Atlas Rose with you all. Again, amazing color, disease resistant, blooms through fall. And just a wonderful, wonderful specimen for your garden. We put our perennial salvias in and then we put back the lamium that was kind of disrupted and the daffodil bulbs that were also disrupted. We just kind of put them right back in around the space and everything should be totally fine. We're really excited about this new kind of area after it was totally blank from the blueberry bushes. So if you liked this video, give us a thumbs up, comment down below. Don't forget to subscribe to Empkin Gardening. We have a lot of fun planting coming up and we hope you go out and get yourself an at last rose. See you in the next video, everyone. Bye.